Tumescent strap to compress the veins. Tumescent strap is one of the complementary procedures of three-dimensional regenerative ambulatory phlebotherapy, or TRAP. As is known, TRAP has revolutionized phlebological treatment by replacing irrational techniques such as sclerotherapy, phlebectomy, saphenectomy, so-called functional ligature, burning by means of laser and high-frequency currents, and the recent absurd procedures of gluing the veins. TRAP is not a mechanistic method. It is a biological technique that treats the venous walls, making the veins continent once again. Its action is three-dimensional, extending to the perforating, communicating and superficial circulation. TRAP treats the hemodynamic hypertension of the venous circulation in the lower limbs. By using light that is close to infrared, we are able to locate the veins that constitute the gateways to the circulation. We inject a regenerative solution of 3% sodium salicylate in a buffered hydroglycerin vehicle into these gateways or visible vessels in sequence in the three regions of the leg, posterior, lateral and medial. This three-dimensional treatment restores the form and function of the veins of the superficial circulation and of the non-visible venous circulation. Illumination with light that is close to infrared has revealed that numerous dilated veins are located in the popliteal cavity, an anatomical area that is difficult to compress. Compression is indispensable both during and after trap in order to counteract hemodynamic hypertension and to allow regeneration of the venous walls. Moreover, in the first few hours after treatment, compression reduces intravenous collections of blood, which may form after the regenerative solution has been injected into large caliber veins. In this patient, following three-dimensional regenerative ambulatory phlebotherapy, we will perform tumescent trap in order to compress the veins of the popliteal cavity, which are difficult to compress with bandages. As always, trap begins from the foot. Transillumination is used to reveal all the vessels, which are injected in sequence. We use a 20 milliliter syringe, filled up to 24 milliliters, and a 25G needle. During the procedure, the needle is changed several times. In each session, 48 milliliters or 72 milliliters of solution is injected, according to the severity of the pathology and the weight of the patient. The session ends when the pre-established quantity of regenerative solution has been injected. Up to 12 milliliters can be injected per single injection. Injecting small amounts of solution is not efficacious, as the solution needs to reach the deep veins within a short time in order to act on the entire internal surface of the perforating vessels. Moreover, injection must be rapid the regenerative solution reaches the sites where it is needed, the most dilated and most dilatable veins. Following three-dimensional regenerative ambulatory phlebotherapy, the regenerated veins become continent. The valves function once again and prevent backflow. The hemodynamic hypertension is corrected and the hydrostatic thrust which causes the sensation of heaviness in the legs, normalizes. All this is achieved without losing the elasticity of the vessels, which disappear from view. Since the leg is a sort of pump, the veins must not be visible. A pump that cannot empty its collectors makes no sense. Once the three-dimensional injection of the regenerative solution has been completed, 
tumescence trap is carried out in the popliteal region in order to compress the numerous ectatic vessels that have been injected. A syringe of a different calibre has been prepared before the session of phlebotherapy. This syringe contains 4 milliliters of lidocaine and 20 milliliters of glycerol solution with the addition of EDTA. After the first injection, we replace the 25G needle with a 21G needle, which enables us to inject more rapidly. Tumescence is created in the subcutaneous tissue above or below the veins that have been injected, in order to compress them. Lidocaine is anti-inflammatory, while EDTA is both anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. The potent chelating action of the EDTA, together with the compression exerted by the glycerol, minimizes intravenous collections of blood and the pigmentations caused by the free iron. We use transillumination to identify the sites where tumescence is to be created. The tumescence trap solution maintains the pasty consistency of the tissues for more than 20 hours, a time that is more than sufficient to prevent stagnation of the blood in the large caliber vessels injected. Tumescence trap is carried out in the concave areas of the foot, which are difficult to compress by means of bandages, in large varices of the lower leg and thigh, and in the popliteal cavity. If large amounts of solution are to be injected, it is advisable to add a small quantity of epinephrine in order to avoid rapid absorption of the lidocaine and its consequent vagal effects. In the patient that we see here, only dilated reticular veins are present. These constitute the escape valve for the hemodynamic hypertension. If the reticular veins had been able to withstand dilatation, numerous telangiectasias would have formed. This clearly illustrates how illogical it is to close or remove the visible dilated veins, which are the escape valves for the hemodynamic hypertension without restoring the continence of the non-visible perforating and communicating veins. In conclusion, tumescence trap is an excellent complementary procedure of trap, which today constitutes the only rational treatment for varicose disease. To access this material you must subscribe to the crpub.org medical video journal. Subscription is free and reserved for medical doctors only.